Hi, my name is Cynthia James. I'm with Kaspersky Lab, and this is number three of a three-part series on internet safety and cybercrime. This particular video is about things we can do to stay safer. Now, there's only so much we can cover in 10 minutes, so I thought I'd start with the five absolute worst cybercrime-related things that could possibly happen. Number one on the list, cyber warfare. This is no longer far-fetched. There have been at least two power outages in the United States, one of them affecting 50 million people, which insiders attributed to hackers from other countries. Number two, cyber stalking of you or someone that you love. Number three, significant financial loss. Now there's a little bit of a misunderstanding about what banks will and won't do here. If you lose credit or debit cards because of a breach, like a target breach, Credit card companies will reverse fraudulent charges. But if it can be shown that cyber criminals broke into your account with your username and password that they got from your local system because they infected your PC, that's not something the bank is liable for. And unfortunately, individuals and small businesses are going bankrupt every day as cyber criminals are emptying their accounts. Number four, your system is used to attack others. We talked about one of the things that cyber criminals want to do when they have a Trojan on your system is sometimes they will hack into other companies. If that trail leads back to you, you will have the FBI knocking on your door. Number five, losing all your files and photographs across your system. If your system becomes victimized by ransomware, this is exactly what could happen. Ransomware gets onto your system, encrypts all files and photographs, and then presents you with a ransom demand. The ransom has to be paid within three days or all of your files will be destroyed. Of course, we're dealing with cyber criminals here, so even when you pay the ransom, you don't always get a key to unlock your system. Okay, let's talk about how we would deal with these five, and then we'll add a few others. Cyber warfare. What does that look like? What it means is anything that's run on hardware and software could potentially be disrupted. So we're talking about mass transport, the power grid, banking systems, all of those could be halted. This effectively looks a lot like a natural disaster. The only good news here is that almost every region or country in the world worries about natural disaster and does some preparation for it. Here in California, where I live and work and where this is being filmed, we worry about earthquakes. So we all have an earthquake preparedness kit somewhere. What cyber warfare does is just suggest that we double down on disaster preparedness. That's the best we can do. Number two, cyber stalking. The best prevention for cyber stalking is awareness and trust in authority figures. If the most vulnerable populations, young kids, teens, college age, the elderly, if they know what to expect out there and the kind of greenfield opportunity that the internet provides to predators, they'll be much more aware of themselves being scammed. As for trust and authority figures, they need to know that law enforcement takes these things very seriously, and if they're being cyber extorted, it's happening to lots of other people as well. Number three, significant financial loss. This is where it's very helpful to add additional security triggers to every financial institution that you connect with online. I'd really recommend that when you're done watching this video, you put 20 minutes on your calendar in the next month to do this. You can also get transaction alerts so that any time a transaction is made on your account, you receive an email about it. This is helpful because if the money hasn't left the country yet, the chance of getting it back is much higher. Once it's left the country, it's very doubtful that you'll be able to recover it. Also, you want to make sure that you're using very high quality AV because you're counting on the fact that your system is updating 10 to 20 times a day. The free AV companies, they don't really have the resources to do this. And make sure that you have auto patching on for all of your very popular applications. Things like Java that are on 3 billion systems and Microsoft Windows, those are really tempting to cyber criminals. So you should be receiving those security updates, in other words, security patches on a regular basis, and it should be a priority for you to restart your system or whatever you need to do to make sure that they're in place. Number four, your system is used to attack others. You can actually turn on alerts on many firewalls, software or hardware firewalls, that'll look at where outbound traffic is going. And they'll send you an alert if anything in your network is infected. So for instance, if one of your children's PCs gets infected on your network with a Trojan, a firewall would be able to say, this PC is trying to communicate with a known bad site. So that's a really useful feature to turn on. Number five, losing all your photographs and files. All of us now should be using automated backup 
There are lots of services out there. Every computer manufacturer offers them. I use an independent service that charges $50 a year for every PC. It's continuously updating in the background. So should I lose a disk drive or be compromised by ransomware? I wouldn't have to worry about it. So that's our list of the top five. Let's add three more. Number six, cultivate patience. I know this is hard in the world we live in today with instant gratification everywhere, but it's going to take a couple extra seconds for your AV to check every file that you try to download from the internet or every removable media that you plug in, but it's worth it. It's also worth adding extra steps at your banking websites, even though it might take a little longer. You can request that they ask a security question every time you log in. You can ask them to send a code to your cell phone before they allow you to log in. Again, these take a few extra seconds, but think of it as barriers between cyber criminals and your money. Very worthwhile. Number seven, let suspicious email get stale. If you understand the game that's going on here, many cyber criminals test their malicious software against all known AV engines and other cybersecurity solutions before they dump it into the internet. So we, the antivirus companies, have like a million cats out there sitting outside a million mouse holes waiting for malware to show up so that we can catch that mouse before it scurries across the room. So time is your friend. If we don't know the second that it hits the internet that it's malware, we will know within a few minutes and certainly within a few hours and definitely within a few days. So if something comes to you that looks a little bit suspicious, just leave it alone for a couple days if you can. By then your antivirus should be saying there's something wrong with this email, deleting the attachment or not letting you go to the website. Our last point, number eight. If you have suspicious email that you feel an urgent need to check, try checking it from a mobile device. The truth is, right now, there's so much more malicious software that's targeted at Windows. If you're checking it from an Android device, the chances are not very high that it's set up to deliver malware to Android devices as well. We have been seeing huge growth in Android malware, but it's still back where Windows was in 2006. It hasn't really taken off yet. So that's another option. Check suspicious email from your mobile device, and you're less likely to get infected. And finally, if you're looking for a world-class AV solution, please consider Kaspersky. If you look at this graph, the size of the bubble indicates the number of first place finishes in independent anti-malware tests worldwide. If you're interested in more information about Kaspersky products, please go to kaspersky.com. So that wraps up our top tips video, and it ends the three-part series on cybersecurity and internet safety. I hope you've learned something, and I hope you'll be inspired to keep up your cybersecurity education. Thank you so much for watching.